In this video, we're going to look at how we connect our different email accounts to Spark Mail. We're going to look at how we connect a Gmail account as well as Apple's Mail account, such as iCloud or .Mac or your .me account. With Apple's iCloud service, what we need to do is create an app-specific password. We'll see how we do that in this video. We're going to look at this on the Mac, iPad, and iPhone, primarily on the Mac because it works pretty much the same way on the iPad and iPhone, but I'll show you where you set this up on the iPad and iPhone as well. Let's go over to my Mac. So I have Spark Mail installed on my computer. You download it from the App Store. It's a free app that you can download. So I have it here in my dock. Now when you first open it up, what it does is it opens up what I call a little card and you can step through the different features of it. So what I need to do is just click on start using Spark. Now before I do that, let's look at what this looks like on the iPad and iPhone. On my iPad, I have Spark installed here on my home screen here. Again, available through the App Store. I click on it and again we have our little marketing card. I can step through the different features here I have to click on next to get to where I can type in my account. I click on let's start and then I can enter in my account. On the iPhone it basically works the same way. I have Spark here on my iPhone. I tap on it and I tap on next down at the bottom until we get to let's start. So now once we tap on let's start or start using Spark what we need to do is type in our email account. So I'm going to go back over to my Mac and I click on start using Spark. Here's where I enter in my email account. Now the next step is dependent on what type of account you use. Now with Gmail it's pretty simple. What I would do is type in my email account, my Gmail account, and then I verify it through the browser. But with iCloud, if you're typing in an iCloud email address or a .me or a .mac account, what you need to do is create an app-specific password. Let's first look at how this works with an app-specific password. So what I'm going to do is type in my iCloud account. That's here, iCloud.com. And I agree to the terms. And now you're going to see it says app-specific password. I need to create an app-specific password. What does this mean? Well, basically what we're not able to do here is type in our iCloud account. Now, why does it work this way? Why does Apple do this? Well, if this app were to get compromised, someone would have your email address, your login, as well as your password. And then they'd be able to log into your Apple ID. So what Apple requires you to do is create an app-specific password. So it's a separate password just for this app, Spark. So how do you do that? Well, actually, it's pretty simple. You're going to see I have a link here, Generate App-Specific Password. And I would have to do this on the iPad and iPhone as well. So I click on Generate App-Specific Password. It opens up to Apple ID. And this is where I type in my Apple ID. So I have to type in my Noteboom Productions at iCloud.com. So now I'm logged into my account. Now here we have a number of different options and one of them, you can see I scrolled up here, one of them is app specific passwords. So this is where I create that. So I need to click on this, I click on the plus, and then I say Spark Mail, and I'm just gonna call it Demo, click on create. I have to enter in my password for my account again. And then you're going to see I have my app specific password. So this is the password that I need to use. So I'm going to copy this. And then when I go back over to Spark, I can put that password in there. And now what it'll do is it will open open up an account or create an account in Spark. So let's go ahead and click on Add Account. And now it is verifying my account. I click on Start Using Spark. And now we can see I can use Spark. I have my inbox here.
Now, how does this work with Gmail? Well, let's go over to my iPad and see how it works with Gmail. I'm going to do this on my iPad. So I go over to my iPad here, and I go over to Let's Start. I'm going to type in my Gmail account. I agree. I click on Next. Then it confirms that I want to use Google.com to sign in. So now what it's going to do is open up to Google.com here. I choose my account. So you can see it works a little bit different. I want to use my Dan Wasink at Mac. What this will do is allow Spark to read, compose, and send mail. That's what I want. I click on Allow here. And now Spark is using that account. You can see it's verifying it. Once it verifies it, I can start using Spark. And then here's my account. So you can see that Gmail works a little bit different than iCloud. Now what I'm going to do is actually log out of Gmail on here, and then I'm going to log in through the Mac. You're going to see something that's pretty cool with Spark. So I'm going to Go to the settings. I need to go up to the top here. I go down to settings in the lower left hand corner. And what I'm going to do is log out here. I type in remove. This is basically saying you're going to remove the account. It will remove all of the mail from your iPad, but it doesn't delete the account. All it does is remove it from the iPad. I log out. And now what this will do is this brings me back to my starting screen. So now let's go back over to my Mac. What I want to do is add another account in here. I'm going to add my Gmail account. Now the reason why I'm going to add it in here is because once I add it in here, what I'm able to do is sign in on my iPad or my iPhone, and it's going to create both of those accounts in Spark. So any account that I add under my Dan Wasink, or I'm sorry, under my Noteboom Productions at iCloud.com here, any other accounts I add in here will also be added on my iPad and iPhone. So let's see what I mean here. I'm going to go back to my Mac. I already have the one account in here. Let's go over to my preferences here. This is where we add accounts. And then I go over to accounts. You're going to see that I have this one account here. Okay, now I just go down to the plus here and I want to add my Gmail account. So I click on the plus, I go to the private email account, and I go over to Google. I proceed in the browser. This is where I have to go and confirm it. I say allow, and now it's confirming it. And now I have both of those accounts in my Spark. We're going to add one other account in here. So we're going to have three different accounts. Once this gets done here, it takes a few minutes to verify it. Looks like I have, yep, let's close that. There we go. We can see it's adding it here. It takes a little bit longer than I thought, but it's coming. And now I have that account in there. Let's go and add one more account here. I'm going to add my school account here. We want to add three. It's a Google account, so I proceed in the browser. Again, I say allow. And now what it's doing is it's adding that account over here. So now I have all three of those accounts in my Spark. Let's close my Safari here. We're going to close my preferences. And you can see I have all three of those accounts there. I can click on any one of them to view just the mail in that account. I can click on Noble Productions. I can see all the mail there. I click on my Dan Wasinka at Gmail. I can see all the mail there. I want to see all the mail. I click on Inbox. So that's basically how that works. Let's see now how we can add these to my iPad and iPhone. So what I'm going to do is go over to my iPad, and I need to tap on Next. And what I'm going to do is use my Noteboom Productions at iCloud.com. So I type in here Noteboom productions at iCloud.com. Click on Agree. What is it going to do? It's going to ask me for an app-specific password. Now, I did not write down that password, so now what do I do? Well, what I have to do is I have to create another app-specific password. So I click on 
generate an app-specific password. I can create two app-specific passwords because this is going to be for Spark Mail on the iPad. So I sign in. I click on Continue. Use my face here. And now it's logging me in. And what I can do is create a new app-specific password. I could do this on the iPhone as well. But you're going to see something that's pretty cool. I'm going to tap on the plus. We're going to call this Spark Mail iPad Demo. I click on Create. I enter in my password. Need my face there again. And there's my password. So I'm just going to copy this. Click on Done. And we're going to go back over to Spark. I have an app-specific password. And now I tap on Login. Even though it's a different password, it's still using the same account. So watch what happens. I'm going to click on Login. And what it's going to do is add my Noteboom Productions. And it's going to add my other two accounts. If we go over to all of my accounts here, you're going to see I have my other two accounts. So even though I typed in one account with a different password, an app-specific password, once it realized that I was putting in there Noteboom Productions at iCloud.com, it also added the other two email accounts. Now, if I wanted to add this to my iPhone, I could do the same thing. I go over my iPhone here, and what I need to do is tap on Let's Start. I type in Noteboom Productions at iCloud.com. I would have to go and generate an app-specific password. So I'd have three different app-specific passwords. But once I type that in on my iPhone, what it will do is it will go and populate all of the other email accounts. So that's how we create accounts. Now, I'm going to make this video a little bit longer because what I'm going to do is log out and we're going to reverse the process here. I'm going to show you a little tip on how you can make this a little bit easier. So now let's go back over to my Mac. And what I'm going to do is delete this account here. So I just go over to my preferences and we go over to accounts and let's delete these accounts here. We're just going to remove them. Log out. So now we're back at the beginning. We're going to do the same thing on the iPad. So I go over to my settings here. Go over to Noteboom Productions. I'm going to remove the data. I type in remove. Log out. And now we're back at the beginning. And if I go to my iPhone, you can see that that is back at the beginning. So we're going to start over, but we're going to reverse the process here. Instead of using an iCloud account first, where I have to use those app-specific passwords and create multiple app-specific passwords, what we're going to do is we're going to use my Gmail account first. Let's go back over to my Mac. We're going to start on the Mac. So now I click on Start Using Spark. We're going to use Dan Wasink at, whoops, there we go, Dan Wasink at gmail.com. I agree. I have to verify through the browser. We're going to go through this relatively quickly. You've seen how this works. I allow. And now it is adding that to my Spark account. Now what we need to do is we need to go and add my iCloud account. So I'm just reversing it. Instead of adding the iCloud account first, I'm going to add the Gmail account first. So I start using Spark. I have my Gmail account in here. Let's go over to my preferences. I go to accounts. We're going to add my school account in here as well. I want to have three accounts in here. Allow. Allow. It's creating that account. And now what we're going to do is add my iCloud account. Oops, wrong one. Try it again. Now we go to iCloud. We need that app-specific password, so I'm just going to go Noteboom Productions at iCloud.com. I have that app-specific password in my clipboard. Remember, I copied it, so I'm going to paste it in there. I click on Add. And now it added that in there. So I have my three accounts. 
So I really only had to get that app specific password one time so far, right? Now let's go over to my iPad and see how this works. I go over to next. Remember I had to get that app specific password again. Oh, and I click on next here and start using Spark. Instead of using my iCloud account, I'm going to use my Gmail account because it's just easier to use than creating a app specific password. Agree, next. I verify through the browser. Again, easier than creating an app specific password. I allow Spark to do that. Now, once I click on allow here, watch what happens. What it's going to do is add that Gmail account and being that on my Mac, I have these other two accounts here. What it will do is it will add those other two accounts. I don't have to create another app specific password. So if I go up to Smartbox here, let's close that little dialog box. You're going to see I have my two accounts, including my iCloud account. I did not have to type in an app specific password. So if you use Gmail first, you don't have to do that. So now let's go and add it to my iPhone. Again, I will not have to use an app specific password because I created an, the account with a Gmail account first. So I go Dan Was or uh, so I go Dan Wasink at gmail.com. What is it going to do next if I type it in right? What is it going to do next? It's going to verify it through a browser. I say, yep, that's the one that I want. I allow Google to access Spark or Spark to access Google. It's verifying my account. And now watch what happens. Once it verifies that account, I don't have to type in an app specific password. It automatically added those accounts in there. It added my school account and it added my iCloud account. So that's how you can add accounts, including multiple accounts, to Spark. You can add iCloud accounts, Outlook Express accounts, you can add Gmail accounts. If you have multiple accounts and you have a Gmail account, what I would recommend doing is creating the Gmail account first in Spark, and then going and adding the iCloud account. That way you only have to use that app specific password one time. You go and add it to another device. When you sign in with your Gmail account, it'll pull your iCloud account in automatically. You don't have to go and create another app specific password. If you only have an iCloud account, then you're going to have to create that app specific password for each device. Or what I could have done is write it down as well and then typed it in. So that's how we add accounts, our mail accounts to Spark on the Mac, iPad, and iPhone.